Hey guys, thanks for coming to my channel today. Um, in this video, uh, I'm just going to go over um, what you would bring to go fishing for catfish. Uh, I'm going to stay pretty simple on here, pretty ex inexpensive. This is pretty much the minimum requirement you would take uh, if you're going to go catfishing. But uh, yeah, let's get started. Um, I'm going to start off with the most basic thing, the uh, rod and reel. When you're picking out a rod and reel, it's really important to choose the right one because if you don't, things can go pretty bad on your trip. But uh, what I have here is a uh, Shakespeare 7 foot medium heavy uh, rod. If When you're picking out a rod, uh, I suggest that you stay in the medium to medium heavy range and that'll pretty much keep you covered on any fish you hook. Okay, for the reel, um, I what I have right here is this, a cheap reel from Walmart. It's not really all that great of a reel. I just picked it out because it was on sale and it was super cheap. Um, it's max, maximum line capacity is uh, 120 yards for a 20 pound line. What I have on here is about 160 yards of 15 pound monofilament line. You can see it's uh, clear right there. Um, choosing a reel, uh, I would choose something a little bit bigger than this. I always like to have at least 180 yards on my uh, spool. Um, 15 pound test is a relatively light line to put on your reel when you're fishing for catfish. Uh, usually, I would stay, I would most likely have 20 pound. Uh, line on there just because that's the basic line and it'll keep you covered for almost all types of fish under 30 pounds. Uh, if you're going to any, any bigger than uh, 30 pound fish then I would suggest uh, 30 or 40 pound test but when you're going high into the higher pound test ranges like that um, sometimes you have to go away from the spinning reels like this one and go up to bait casting reels because they have higher line capacities and uh, so if you like to use the spinning reels, then I would stay in the lower pound test range because that's just more suitable for these types of reels. Okay, so let's talk about the bait. Uh, bait is one of the most important aspects of catfishing. Uh, the bait types vary with the uh, different types of catfish that you're going after. Um, there are four different main types of catfish that, you can, that most people go for. And those are the channel catfish, uh, bullhead catfish, blue catfish, and um, flathead catfish. I usually fish for uh, channel catfish and occasionally for flathead catfish. And my favorite bait, this is the bait I use all the time, it's my go-to uh, bait for channel catfish, is the hog wild catfish dip bait in the original flavor. Uh, there, are, Again, there's a lot of different baits out there. Um, the ones I use most often are this one, the Hog Wild, Secret 7 Catfish Bait, Catfish Charlie, uh, Blood Flavored Nuggets, you can find those at Academy, uh, Walmart, Bass Pro, places like that, and I also like to use Night Crawlers, those are extremely good bait, the only downside to those is sometimes smaller fish like bluegill, and bass will come and steal those right off your hook, and that can be really frustrating at times. Um, but the other bait that I really like to use, especially for blue catfish, is uh, live and cut bait. I use bluegill as my live and cut bait, but probably the most um, popular catfish cut bait is uh, shad. You can take a cast net and throw those around them marinas and docks before you hit the boat for uh, your fishing trip and you can catch tons of those. Alright, let's get into some terminal tackle. Um, right here you see the hooks. Um, hooks come in so many different sizes and shapes that it can get very confusing. And there is two main styles of hooks that I use when I fish for catfish. And those are standard J-hooks, like you see in these three right here. And circle hooks, like you just see in this one right here. Um, there is a large difference 
between circle hooks and J hooks. J hooks, you have to set the hook, which uh, involves jerking the rod backwards forcefully to shove the hook into the fish's mouth and secure it tightly in there so you can reel it in, while circle hooks are designed to slide uh, securely into the side of the fish's jaw. And some people like J hooks, some people like circle hooks better. Uh, I personally like both. They both work well for me, um, and they both are usually used in different situations. Or at least I use them in different situations. With the circle hooks here, uh, I use these for bottom fishing usually. The J hooks I use generally for uh, mid to top water fishing. That's just my personal preference. You can do whatever you like. But the reason I like to use the circle hooks for bottom fishing is because whenever I fish off the bottom, I use the sliding sinker rig usually and the three-way rig. And I don't have to watch one single rod the entire time to make sure that the rod tip isn't moving. I can just leave this hook here and it will set the hook automatically. And that greatly improves the convenience of fishing with multiple rods. Okay, let's get into the sinkers. Now, for me, I use four different types of sinkers whenever I am fishing. And those types are egg sinkers, like you see here, dipsy swivels, right here, or dipsy sinkers, right here, uh, split shots, and slip sinkers. All of these have different purposes. Um, egg sinkers are used for um, no, like, the fish can't feel the weight of your uh, line, so they're just pulling it freely without the uh, weight moving. Um, dipsy swivel or dipsy sinkers are uh, tie on sinkers, usually used with the three way rig. And uh, split shots are just kind of, they're pinch on sinkers. So you can take a pair of pliers and squeeze those onto your line. And they sometimes also come, uh, you can take them off, like this one right here, you can see. And um, slip sinkers are a lot, are pretty much the same as egg sinkers. They just look different. Okay, let's get into another important part of your setup when you're fishing for catfish. And this aspect is swivels. Um, for me, I use three different types of swivels when I fish for catfish. And those are barrel swivels, three-way swivels, like the one you see in the middle, and uh, barrel swivels with the safety snap on them. Okay, so these swivels are very different from each other. The barrel swivel, like you see right here, is made for t the tying on of a knot right here at this eyelet and one right here. Generally you tie your main line to one eyelet and leader line to here and it can be used for a variety of different types of rigs and in case you don't know what a rig is I'll go over them in a minute but for now let's just stick to the swivel part um, for this one, you can use the sliding sinker rig, just so many different varieties of stuff and for so many different species. Um, I use this barrel swivel 80% of the time when I fish. Okay, now this is kind of an odd looking swivel. You can see, unlike the barrel swivel, it has three eyelets. Um, this is made for three-way fishing. And what three-way fishing is, is you would take this and you would tie your main line, which is the line coming off of your spool to this one, the weight either to this, this eyelet or this eyelet, and then you would have line preferably shorter than the line going down to the weight, line going down to, up, over to the hook, and it would keep you off the bottom while you were fishing. Okay, this is a swivel that looks much like the barrel swivel, 
only it has this safety snap clipped to the end of the barrel swivel. And what that snap is for is you can see that lower piece of wire on the snap. And you would open that up and you could slide something that is already pre-snelled onto the clip, something like uh, this. You can see it has a hook and then it comes up and it's got a loop pre-tied onto there. And you would slide that through the wire and then clip the safety, safety snaps uh, closed. And these are really convenient if you don't want to have to tie a bunch of knots when you're fishing. Um, I actually use these two things together quite a bit, especially for topwater fishing for catfish when they're feeding off the top. Um, it works really well. The reason the spring is on here is because you can dip that in some dip bait and it'll stay on the hook really well. Okay, now this is a view of pretty much what would be if I had to bring one little case full of stuff to go for catfishing. This is probably what I would bring besides my bait, which obviously could not fit in here. But you can see I have everything sorted into the little segments. I have my floats, bells, and clip-ons in here. Those snelled hooks you saw earlier. Extra hooks in these bags. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, these are all my egg, bullet, egg and bullet sinkers. Uh, my dipsy sinkers and beads. Uh, Assorted hooks, some are treble, some are J, some are circle hooks. Uh, these are my <coughs> slip sinkers and slip sinkers and uh, split shot sinkers. Um, these are all my swivels. Um, these are this one right here, this longer one, is just kind of miscellaneous stuff. You can see these tie on. These things are kind of cool. They hold bait really well. Uh, fish. D gutter, I guess you could say, if the fish swallows the hook, some basic stringers, light sticks for fishing in the dark, and then this pack of uh, Magic Bait King Cat Chicken Blood I just kind of threw in here just in case of an emergency. I've never actually even used these, I don't know if they work, but hey, better safe than sorry, right? Okay, now let's talk about some things that are not absolutely necessary to bring on your trip but greatly improve the convenience and comfortableness of your trip. Um, obviously, most people would take the time to just pack some scissors and needle nose pliers. Uh, it's not necessary. I mean, you could use your teeth for breaking the knots and clipping extra line and stuff, but that's not very fun. Um, also, I have a little tiny spool, just 100 yards of South Bend 8-pound monofilament line. Uh, this is, like, I don't usually take this on my catfish trips, but I didn't have an extra spool of larger line, like, heavier pound test than this. But just get something that's, like, 15, 20 pound test. Doesn't need to be a humongous spool of it, just, like, 100 yards, like that. And also... Take a pair of gloves. I mean, a lot of people, you'll see, they just grab the catfish by their mouth, but sometimes they'll start wiggling their bodies around, and it can really tear your hands up, and that is not fun, and it's something, you can bleed pretty bad by that. I've torn my hands up so many times before that I finally was just like, you know what, I'm just going to go grab a pair of gloves. Got these at Walmart for like three bucks, and I have landed so many catfish with these, it's crazy. It's just like, it's almost a no-brainer to not have a pair of gloves on you. It's not necessary, but it's it's smarter than not taking anything, and it'll protect you. Okay, so lastly, it's another thing. It's not absolutely necessary, but definitely improves your comfortability or comfortableness on your trip. And this is just like, a, it's a small net. It's got some wear and tear in it. I don't really use this. It used to be my bass landing net, but sometimes I'll and the smaller cats that I catch. Uh, I would recommend a larger one than this, but if you're pl not planning on to go after anything over 10 pounds, then this is, this is fine. Um, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it uh, taught you some things that it, told, it taught you the things that you came to learn here. 
And please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any uh, any questions about this video or any other videos, uh, they'll be answered. And thanks for watching.